on day two of our trip to Colonial Williamsburg, Felicity wore her green jacket and matching wool skirt with a three-cornered hat, and she rode in my backpack. We started off day two at the wig maker. The wig maker showed us how she wove horse hair into silk netting. A wig took a total of 145 hours to complete, so they were very expensive. Wealthy men were the ones to wear wigs in Colonial Williamsburg. Wig wearing started in France to show status in society. In Europe, women wore wigs too. This one was powdered blue. The Silversmith. Silversmiths made silverware, like the spoon Felicity is holding. They made coffee pots, bowls, jewelry, and other metal items. This silversmith is polishing a bowl. Silversmiths had lots of tools. First, they would melt sterling silver at about 2,000 degrees, and then pour liquid metal into a mold. Using a hammer, they would shape the metal into the desired shape. Later, it was stretched to the desired thickness and then hammered and polished into objects like bowls. The silversmith was kind enough to let Felicity pose with his bowl. I noticed a three-cornered hat just like Felicity's hanging on the silversmith's wall. In the Felicity stories, her father runs a shop. There were many stores in Williamsburg, like this one, the Nicholson store, which supplied uniforms to the army during the Revolutionary War. Today, there are also stores in Colonial Williamsburg. Here, you can purchase things like candles that were handmade and the jewelry that the silversmith makes. George Washington. This George Washington impersonator told the stories of George Washington's life. It was fascinating to hear him tell the stories as if he had really lived them. Next, we took Felicity to the King's Arms Tavern. The King's Arms Tavern was a real working tavern in Williamsburg, and today it is a restaurant. While we ate, a minstrel or musician told us all about the history of the King's Arm. First, he explained what a tavern is. Lodging. So this would have been your hotel, as well as your restaurant. And because of that, out back, just through that window, uh, we would have had functional stables to care for your horse while you were here. Now, you expected this, but more importantly, the courts expect this. So they license the taverns to operate, and they will set the fees that you can be charged on an annual basis. And there's an advantage to travelers in that, which is that a meal costs the same here as it does at Christian Camps. Um, you know, a glass of wine costs the same here as it does at the Raleigh Tavern. Your horse for 12 hours uh, would cost the same here as it would um, down at you know, Challenge or any of that. So all of this would be known to you. The fees would be posted when you came in off the street, so you knew what these cost. And then um, you would entertain yourselves for as long as you wish because you're eventually going to use the stairs to get up to bed. I noticed how much Felicity's chairs looked like the ones at the King's Arm Tavern, and how much her guitar looks like the one the minstrel was playing. 
the minstrel played the song Yankee Doodle Dandy for us. First, he explained it had been an English song that we changed the words to. Because it was being hurled at us from the British regulars, uh, we won the war and then we changed the words to suit ourselves. So here you go. Father and I went down to Catalan, Captain Good. There we saw the men and the boys as big as tasty food. Yankee Doodle, keep it up. Yankee Doodle, daddy. My music and the stuff and with a girl who had me. There we saw George Washington on the strap of Stalin. The menu at the King's Arms also detailed the history of the tavern. Opened in February of 1772 by Jane Vogue, it was just down the street from the Capitol building and across the street from the Raleigh Tavern, which we visited next. Raleigh Tavern. Today, this tavern is a museum named for Sir Walter Raleigh, who founded the Virginia colonies this tavern's Apollo Room hosted secret meetings where discussions about the revolution were held. This is the Daphne Room, the main dining room in the Raleigh Tavern. Notice the tiered glass tray on the table, which is a lot like Felicity's. The bar was the next thing we saw. Now our barkeep has everything he needs. He has the crystal glasses to fill with wine. He has the jugs to fill with beer or whatever drink they might need. We have some ports and bowls. Maybe some, you know, tea will be stored behind here. Sugar, perhaps. He's got shelves to store. This bar was actually made of bars because expensive ingredients like sugar were kept behind it. If the barkeep had to make a run down into the cellar through that trap door, having those bars meant protecting expensive inventory. This is the Apollo Room. It could be rented out for balls, lectures, concerts, meetings, or gaming. As mentioned earlier, some secret meetings about the Revolutionary War were held here. In the next room was a giant pool table which guests could use. Although the Raleigh Tavern is not a restaurant, it does have a working bake shop famous for its ginger cakes. The Capitol this building is where the English governor and other officials conducted business. Later, it is the place where the United Colonies were declared free and independent states. It is divided into two sections with beautiful arches in the middle. Inside the building is a map of the original 13 colonies. I noticed how far west each of the colonies actually stretched. There are several routes in the capital where meetings were held and laws were enacted. I'll link a great video about the capital at the end of this video. The next stop for Felicity was the apothecary. An apothecary is a pharmacy. William Pasteur, who created processes to make milk safer, opened this medicine shop with a partner in 1775. Today you can visit and have a pharmacist explain the types of medication that were used in colonial times. Many medicines were made of herbs. 
The one on the right says it is infused with Peruvian bark. Herbs would be crushed, mixed together, and stored in all kinds of containers. The Chocolate House A lot of research has gone into recreating the hot chocolate of Felicity's time. Today you can purchase American Heritage chocolate to see what it would have tasted like. Felicity got to visit a chocolate house that served hot chocolate at one time in Williamsburg. As told in Felicity's stories, patriots began to drink hot chocolate instead of tea when the British began charging high taxes on tea. This led to the famous Boston Tea Party. The teapots in the chocolate house came in many different shapes, colors, and sizes. Some looked very much like the one American Girl created for Felicity. The Museum. The final stop for Felicity on day two was the Art Museum. Here we were able to see where American Girl got the ideas for Felicity's furniture and accessories, like the writing chair. Or her clothes press. Although mine is a little banged up and in need of repairs. The round scalloped tea tables in the museum look exactly like Felicity's. I love how her tables fold down just like the real ones. The museum displayed lots of China tea sets from the colonial period. Blue was a popular color for China pieces at that time. American Girl created Felicity's pen holder in a similar blue pattern. Her hot chocolate set fits right in with the china of the day as well. This no stamp act teapot protests another tax that England put on the colonies. The colors and shape of this teapot remind me of Felicity's teapot. And in the middle of all the china, I spotted a five-finger quintal vase just like the one in Felicity's Party Treats set. Although the one in the museum was very decorative, I like Felicity's a lot too. Felicity and I both enjoyed day two of Colonial Williamsburg.